Hello everyone, welcome to the YouTube channel of Dr. Amit's Biochemistry. Uh, this is Anandita here. Uh, as, uh, as this lecture series of immunology is going on, so you might have seen the last videos which is available on the same YouTube channel as a playlist of immunology. So here this is the first part of antibody diversity which we are going to study uh, today. So make sure you watch the antibody videos, at least the antibody video which is available in the playlist. I think the last video was that. So this antibody diversity is something called, uh, we might have seen there are a lot of antigens, right, foreign particle which is entering our body. But our immune system has the ability to make antibodies against lot many antigen which is foreign to our body, right? Uh, how is this things happening is something called diverse uh, theories are given for that and this is the beauty of immune system or immunology uh, that it can make antibodies or proteinaceous weapons against a lot many antigens right or foreign particles or pathogen we can say. Uh, just keep one concept in your mind that uh, there is a process uh, called central dogma, right? We have DNA and DNA changing to mRNA and mRNA changing to protein, right? So this is the central dogma of molecular biology. Uh, DNA is replicated and a segment of DNA that is the gene. Uh, what segment of DNA is called gene? Something which could code for mRNA is gene. This is the best uh, definition of gene that uh, a segment of DNA that could code for mRNA, right? This is gene. And that mRNA in turn translates to become protein. Uh, amino acid sequence and then folding occurs and protein formation happen. And that protein in turn takes a lot many shapes. Uh, here we are talking about or concentrated about antibody. So see this image of antibody. What we see here is, uh, this is the heavy chain, right? This is the light chain. And this part is the variable region of heavy as well as light chain, right? So see, uh, there are uh, many uh, theories that how these diverse formation of antibodies are happening. So we have uh, several parts and these parts like heavy chain, light chain, so the, they are the product of translation, right? Means uh, mRNA that is changed to uh, protein as they are proteinaceous. So it's not that if E, this whole part is transcribed or translated from a single mRNA, right? So there are segments. They parts, these uh, segments needs to be assembled and they are translated from different gene, right? So this permutation and combination makes the antibody diversity. This is it. Likewise, this heavy chain is there, this light chain is there and some joining region is there. All these are translated from a di different segment of gene, right? And later on they are assembled. Now see, for antibody uh, diversity, there are two theories. Uh, one is the germline theory and another is the somatic hypermutation theory, right? See, when we talk about germline theory, so it was widely accepted, not that. Uh, but later on we found that it is something called uh, very much... Uh, hectic kind of thing and explanation was not so much possible. Germline theory explains that there is every uh, gene uh, which is present in the germ cell for antibody formation, right? So about we have, for suppose we are taking 10 to the power 7, this is not the constant number that exists, uh, you know, constantly for each, for that. There may be less or there may be more, right? So, for suppose we are taking the number 10 to the power 7 antibodies are there. So, it needs it's for heavy chain and light chain if single genes are there. Then we need at least 2000 nucleotides. So, can you imagine how much big segment of DNA is there only for the antibody? So, there are other functioning also in our body. Not only the antibody formation, right? Other functioning, like other proteins are also forming. So it needs a huge expenditure of genetic information, which is a heavy uh, expenditure, right? And our system, biological system, not only our biological system, any uh, any kind of living organism which is present on the earth, the biological system is very much smart in it itself. The term smart can be used because energy conservation as well as they're following 
एंट्रोपी कॉन्सेप्ट और एनी थिंग लाइक दैट इज वेरी मच जुडिशियस द यूज ऑफ एनर्जी इज वेरी मच जुडिशियस सो वी कॉन्ट एक्सपेंड दैट मच और वी कॉन्ट बियर एक्सपेंडिंग दैट मच एनर्जी फॉर ओनली एंटीबॉडी फॉर्मेशन सो दिस डर्म लाइन थ्योरी इज नॉट मच एक्सेप्टेड वेन सोमैटिक हाइपर म्यूटेशन थ्योरी केम दिस इज द सेकेंड थ्योरी दिस से इज दैट दे इज अ म्यूटेशनल मैकेनिज्म राइट वन एंटी रिसेप्टॉयर इज देयर एंटीबॉडी फॉर्मेशन हैपन्स इन द बी सेल एज बी सेल बी सेल इज एक्टिवेटेड एंड बिकम्स प्लाज्मा सेल एंड देन एंटीबॉडी फॉर्मेशन आकर्स राइट सो दिस टेल्स दैट देर इज सम प्राइमरी रिसेप्टॉयर इन विच सेवरल sort of mutations are occurring and that mutation uh, leads to uh, different forms and diversity of antibody so this theory is also known as primary receptor theory now these two theories were there but a major work uh, breakthrough occurred in 1970s and 1980s right there were two scientists right bunnett and rear in 1970s they proposed something some theory right which was not proved then only hypermutation and germline theory simultaneously these things had occurred then there was a scientist tonigawa right tonigawa was a scientist he has proved this theory of bunnett and dreyer right the theory was there is multiple gene segments that code the light chain means it's not that single there was concept that before it was concept that single gene is responsible for antibody but here it was there is multiple gene segments that is coding for the light chain uh, it was just about light chain but we will see about heavy chains also now this theory is later on accepted as vdj recombination here this is the segment of gene for suppose so we have five prime and three prime region for the trans uh, transcription process and this is the downstream region downstream and upstream when you will be studying about i think uh, you have studied about the transcription if you have not then watch the playlist of molecular biology and genetics uh, dr amit has very nicely explained about these things uh, this transcription process and translation process you see v segment is there so amino acid uh, this is the number of amino acid 1 to 97 then j segment is there amino acid up to 98 to 100 then we have v, v segment d segment and j segment right so this recombination for suppose v segment is there it will form mrna and then protein j segment it will form mrna and protein uh, various other segment j1 j2 v is there so v1 v2 v3 a lot many j1 j j2 3 j3 a lot many and about d segment they can also make a lot for j segment it's not a lot of means two or three, i think some uh, constant number is there this is the joining region of antibody this is the variable region and this d is the diverse region responsible for the hyper variable region which is of the antibody you can clearly see in the picture of antibody here this hinge region is the joining region this uh, is the variable region and this portion is the constant region for light and heavy both right so this is the gene segment that codes for these all things about vdj recombination we will be learning in the next part uh, i'll be leaving you with one question uh, what does d stand for in vdj recombination i think it's very easy i have told also in the video you can see the options uh, hopefully you can comment in the uh, option uh, this comment section below and this was all about the introduction for your uh, antibody diversity in the next part we'll cover up about how this vdj recombination work uh, actually works right so thank you so much for your patient listening uh thank you